This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 34, on the 7th of November 2013. An interview with Caroline Bottomley, Managing Director of Radar Music Videos. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show. And uh, this week it's an absolute pleasure to welcome uh, Caroline Bottomley, Managing Director of uh, Radar Music uh, Videos. So hi Caroline and great to have you on. How's it going? It's going very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's great to have you. And so uh, today we're going to talk about radar, of course, and, and uh, what you guys do. So for first thing, uh, what is radar and what is the, does the company do in a nutshell? Okay, so um, we're a network of over 9,000 music video directors, and we connect labels and artists to these directors. And we specialize in finding directors who will work on budgets between 500 and 5,000 pounds. Right. And... and yeah, we're we're a connection service. Great, that's awesome. And so, how did you start out? Uh, when did you start out uh, uh, with the company? It started in two thousand and seven. I come from a, a promotion, live promotion background. I used to work at a club in Sheffield um, uh, called Leadmill, um, and I worked in, in music promotion for a long time. Then I worked in TV um, in London for a long time after that, um, and always wanted to set up a business. And Radar um, started came to life in 2007 but it was a very different thing back then it was um the idea was that uh the directors would make music videos on spec and then the best videos would win um they would win either a thousand pounds or they get to make the next uh, music video for whichever label with it was involved which was warp and um domino at the time Absolutely. um and that business model ran for a couple of years. We, we had a festival at the iTunes store, at the Apple store on Regent Street. So it was very exciting. Um, but it's not a model that directors like very much or not a model that directors who are on their career pro progression like very much because it's very wasteful and it's very risky. Like, Of course. I mean, it's a bit like when uh, advertising agencies pitch, uh, ask for pitches from music production companies. And, you know, a producer has to decide whether to devote that entire day to do a piece of music that might not get chosen. So, Absolutely the same. Absolutely the same. Yeah, so we, we've swapped it into a, a, a pitching system rather than a create, rather than making on spec system right. um, in 2009 and fiddled around with the business model for a year or so a year or 18 months. And then Radar proper started operating in, um, yeah, towards the end of, to 2010 2011 that's great and so uh looking at uh, some of the, let's start by looking at some of the success stories you've had for example uh of uh, videos that might have been produced for for a relatively small budget and actually went on to do really well so uh anybody that comes to mind first thing um well the most successful one that's ever been made through radar was for alt j's breeze blocks um oh. in fact just commissioned a guy over in new york and he made a film over there with a couple of actors in an apartment. Um, it was four thousand pounds, and which is a big budget on radar. So they had a lot of interest for that. But they went this with this guy Ellis Ball, who was a relatively new director, um, and it's just it's past eighteen million views on YouTube, wow. and it's still wow. going strong. And Ellis has since been signed by two of the best production companies in the US and over here in the UK. So he's really happy. And he doesn't make videos for £4,000 anymore. I'm sure. <laughs> and so essentially, like what I'm seeing here is, is a cycle of uh, not only helping bands that need a video or create a band on a budget, but also helping directors that are looking for a break, uh, uh, you know, get that break and make a bit of money in the process, right? Absolutely. Um, we, we aim for a really specific sector of, the, of that market, which is um, graduates who have made videos for their friends, um, but don't have contacts with, in the music industry. So they've, they've got a bit of reel behind them, but they need to, they need to really get stuff in the industry. And commercials directors who got, you know, a great career history behind them, but they don't have contacts in the music industry. Right. So people are coming to us basically to connect. Um, once we we will promote those videos that they make to the creative press and try and help them move further up their career path. So by the time they join their production company, that's when we lose them because they don't need us to find work anymore. So we try to get people from here over to here, that's and great. we try to keep them going. 
Yeah, so that, that's fantastic. And looking at, uh, I mean, a, a big question that uh, people are asking all the time these days, and I've actually moderated a panel uh, about three weeks ago in Dublin about uh, this very subject, is uh, the, the monetization of videos. And so uh, people talking about uh, videos moving from being a promotional vehicle to being a potential a source of income. And at the same time, on the, on the, on the other side of the, of, the, of the plate, I guess, is uh, thinking about budgets and thinking about whether there is the potential to make that money back, uh, uh, even if you don't have a completely viral hit, essentially. So uh, how do you see bands approaching videos today? Are they looking at them in a different light than they did maybe uh, you know, three or four years ago, uh, thanks to the potential incomes that are coming from the likes of YouTube? Or are they still very much seen as a promotional vehicle for the independent sector right now? I think some really interesting things are happening around that, as, as you are saying. Um, one thing is uh, a lot of labels that we talk to say 500 to 5,000 is our sweet spot. That's where we want to commission. Um, that's the budget that we use. So a lot of people are in that area. However, I'm a, um, one of the other things that I do is um, I'm a judge for the UK Music Video Awards. And when you do that, you're in a room with uh, 10, 15 other people in the music video industry, most of whom are with production companies. So they're working on really big budget stuff. And the word from them is that budgets are going up as right. far as they're concerned. So there are, because on the whole, production companies don't want to work with um, music video budgets below five grand. And so they're going up. However, Last weekend at ADE, um, Amsterdam Dance Event, I met um, a fairly, uh, a very well-established UK label who said they're actually thinking of stopping doing music videos at all because they're too expensive. Even low-budget wow. ones are too expensive. Um, That's interesting. So, yeah. It's kind of a, yeah, um, it's, it's a weird market. I guess like... Uh, it feels like quite polar, polarized in a sense because it feels like the artists that are at the top end of the scale with the big big labels or you know that have had major breakthroughs with independence they are able to recoup all those costs and much more if they get you know 10 15 20 million views that translates in quite a bit of revenue actually uh, from the, from the video side even if they don't pay very much uh, whilst if you're on the independent scale even if you have a few hundred thousand views you have invested 5000 pounds you might only just probably break break even with the costs and so uh, yeah, it's a very interesting vertical, I think, that we find ourselves in. But then again, without the video, people don't, they don't appear to be engaging with the song uh, as much. And so that, that also, that's another thing to take into account, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was uh, when uh, the guy said, we're thinking of not doing them, it's, um, wow, like, you know, but everybody's doing them because YouTube is where you go to, to listen to music but um anyway it'll be interesting to see whether he follows through with that yeah absolutely um, and what he, he said. <laughs> and looking at uh, the video market I mean, I, 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 do you also uh get asked to do uh, do you get commissions for lyric videos that's something that's quite interesting right now because people are uh trying to do lyric videos to save some money and also trying to go to market as soon as the single comes out but they also want to do interesting lyric videos that are appealing to their audience so do you find that people are coming to a company like, like yourself to try and commission a, an interesting lyric video as well yes um absolutely we do um uh, some labels are for them and really like them and um use them as you say to get to market quickly um with something very low cost and interesting um we've got a jesse j a, a, a brief for a letter a Jesse J commission about six weeks ago, um, and they wanted that really, really quickly. But a guy, coincidentally, again in America, an animator, pulled all the stops out um, and did one for her, which was done really well. Uh, looking at uh, how you are, you know, planning to evolve with the company as well. So, uh, you know, of course, uh, it's a, it's a volume business. So, of course, the more videos that get commissioned through radar, the, the better it is. And so, what's your strategy? Do you see a lot of uh, um, people coming from international markets and if not uh, are you thinking about uh, doing more work on, on that front as well yes we're, we're uh, we are focusing on building our business in the u.s particularly and um, because that's such a huge market um and yeah so it, it, it's uh we're, we're some way along that line but very much at the beginning of that journey um yeah. utti is helping us uh to develop 
develop projects over there. I'm beginning to go to more conferences over there. I'm beginning to talk to people about becoming an agent for radar over there so that we can have people on the ground. I, I gather that American people like doing business with American people, so we're um, looking um, having talked to American people and bring that in. It's going to be interesting how far it can grow in this in this business model because we can only take it so far because labels, whilst they like having um, a good range of briefs to choose from, right. at the moment we're we're delivering on average between five and fifteen um, pitches per brief. But labels aren't going to like it if they start getting forty. Um, pitches right. per brief, so we're going to have to deal with that, and I'm not sure how we will do. I mean, we will do, but we're not we're not there yet. But, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, so I just want to give like uh, somebody uh, people that are listening, especially for labels that are listening, a taste of uh, the process. So, uh, talk me through from you know a label deciding that they want to commission a video, or an artist that has some budget as an independent want to commission a video through through Radar. How does the process work, what, step by step? So let's say Andrea Leonelli has uh, £2,000 to put on the site. So you would um, go to the radar and you click on a button that says post a brief. Um, and it would take you to a page that you'd fill out your name, your track title, what you're looking for. It can be anything from uh, I'm open to ideas to we're looking for something wintry and um, and scary. Um or something more specific than that. We recommend don't get too specific. But, um, yeah. So you do that. You put on your budget, which you agree to pay. If you do commission, you agree to pay whoever you commissioned that budget. Um, you put a SoundCloud link up or an MP3, a lyrics file, references to other videos that you like if you want to do that. Uh, you put up the date that you want all the pictures by. You put the date that you want the video delivering by, and then you press publish, and it goes live on the site. So there's no charge to labels and artists at all to use Radar. At, at no point do labels and artists um, have to pay for using Radar. Um, so this has gone live on the site, and we send out an email to all of the 9,000 and odd directors that are on Radar that are registered saying this brief has just come on. If you're not a subscribing director, you can only see that it's £2,000, that it can be made anywhere in the world, and that the treatment, the pitch deadline is two weeks on, on Monday. If you've subscribed, then you can get behind that paywall and you can see that it's you, that it's your track, you can listen to your track, and you can um, submit the pitch through the site. Right. So we right. make our money through director subscriptions. It's, it's, that's that's our business model. Okay, anyway, great. So uh, I wasn't sure whether you were taking a commission on the on the on the productions, but that's a subscription model. Yeah. Great. We tried that, um, but it didn't work. It didn't work. It's um, it's es escrow is difficult. So we look we looked at that as an option. That um, is ex uh, an expensive option. Taking commission is uh, kind of works, but you have to invoice people. You have to chase people for money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah. So we tried this and thought if the the current model thought if it works well we'll stick with it and it yeah. does and, and it's enough to pay for us to keep growing. There's five there's five people work for Radar as well as me, so um, they're not all full time. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, you know we're we're growing and it's and it's going well. But anyway, those pitches they come to you by email. Yeah. You can read them all, or you can read them on um, your uh, account on Radar. You can click through to the director's profile, so you can see what other work they've done um, and their bio. You can shortlist through there, so if you don't like um, pitches and you know you don't like them, you can just press one button and it sends an email via the site saying, really sorry, not this time, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a nicely worded email, but it goes via the site, so you don't have people emailing you back and saying, but why not? Um, but the people that you do shortlist, you press another button and it sends a get in touch email with your email address so people can then contact you direct, at which point it's over to you. So you decide. But we're kind of out of the picture once we talk to you up to people that you like. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that sounds great. And it sounds like it, you know, it's a real video service to 
to you know the music business and to producers that are using using the site. So uh, yeah, I really love the the idea, and uh, I I understand why. I, for example, I was interviewing uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, Eric McKay from Vivo in Berlin a couple of months back, and uh, he said of uh, how much he loves uh, Radar because they produce really great quality videos for independent artists that then can end up on Vivo and on the, and on platforms that only accept videos made to spec uh, and that are you know that have a certain uh, quality to them. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, great that you're doing this. And uh, uh, so looking at the next six months or so, uh, you know, you were talking about um, a couple of, uh, you know, a few panels that you've been organizing recently and also South by Southwest, you're going to be there as well. So if uh, anybody that's listening to the show uh, right now is going to be at South by Southwest, so they can get in touch with you and perhaps uh, get a meeting whilst you're over in Austin. So what are you going to be talking about over there? We're going to be talking about um, uh, using channels on YouTube um, to best effect. So we're going to have, um, it's, it's going to be very exciting actually. So there's Patrick Walker from Base 79 and Patrick Walker has come from YouTube. Of course. He yeah. now works with them. Um, and so we're going to be talking about um, uh, hooking up with them to promote your videos on YouTube. We've got Zach Vibert from Hospital who unusually, a hospital have decided not to go with a multi-channel network and they're doing it all in-house and they've got their own YouTube certification and so on. So Zach's going to be talking about doing it in-house and why they've decided to do it in-house. Um, and then we have Del Diaz who runs um, AEI Media, which which is part of the, looks after an umbrella of um, companies like um, Majestic Casual and UKF. And... Um, Dell is very, very smart about um, video content. I mean, UKF have got a phenomenally huge amount of subscribers. So they are, like many other labels, are very, very switched on about YouTube and how to use YouTube well. Um, so we'll be talking to Dell about, Dell will be talking about uh, managing across uh, the channels that he has. But also looking at A and Ring because um, they do a lot of A and Ring through their YouTube channels. Totally, yeah. yeah. That sounds fun, and, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, earmark that as one of the panels to go to uh, in March. Uh, that's great. Uh, well, Caroline, it was an absolute pleasure having you on, and I would recommend uh, people to uh, go and check out the website. Uh, so uh, go on uh, radarmusicvideos.com, and you'll find uh, all the information about the site. You can also watch some of the videos that have been produced uh, by the platform, so you can uh, get, a, get a sense of the, the, the you know incredible quality of the videos that are uh, produced uh, through uh, uh, with Raiders help and uh, definitely a company to keep an, uh, keep in mind if you are thinking about commissioning a video uh, on a relatively small budget. Uh, thanks so much Caroline, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. And thanks so much for listening. Uh, the, the DMT one to one goes out every week, uh, and you can also check out the weekly news show uh, all on digitalmusictrends.com or follow us on Twitter on at DigiMusicTrends. Have a great week and till next time. Thanks for listening to the DMT one to one show, and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.